Hello. Hello, Hakan. How are you doing? Good, good. Fine. Hello. How are you did? Hello, you did. Do you know if Lance is going to join us today? I'm going to ping him. He should let me see. So we are it didn't response. Yeah. Ah, yeah. There he is. Sorry. <laughs> good, good. <laughs> nice. Hey Lance. Hey, sorry folks. Uh, I have a bunch of workers at the house and well, let's just say <laughs> nothing's going right uh, with it. And yeah, I, I knew I had a meeting and then I forgot as they were telling me all my horror stories. All right, it's great to see you. Sorry for the delay. Um, let's see, are we recording? Mm, I'll record, I guess. Hey, Judith. It's, hey, it's already, it's already, it's already hmm. recording. I think. Already recording. Okay. Yeah. Oh, that's right. It they say that? Yeah, it's recording. Yeah. Okay. So, um, let's see. Uh, well, two things that I just added to the spreadsheet are just the PRs from the two different projects. Um, so, uh. There's the big one for AFJ. Uh, let's see here, Sheets. And Aries did come V2. And I need to share my screen. Not that, not that I'm showing you anything fantastic here, but it's always good to revisit the spreadsheet. Uh, okay, so um yeah 
uh, let's see, I had it there, but really I'm changing. This interoperability page is gonna have to change uh, a bunch uh, eventually, but under projects, uh, I added these related PRs. So in Hakan and Judith, they're doing uh, the Akapai stuff uh, for issue credential and present proof, V3. And then there's in the ongoing, uh, you know, massive integration um, one, uh, PR for DidCom V2 in AFJ, uh, and then they have a, also a, a PR related to like the mediator functionality uh, in AFJ. So I added those to the spreadsheet. I guess I'll just post the link to this again, just in case for posterity. Oh. Yeah, can, can you share this uh, spreadsheet with us as well. I'm not sure if I was in the list. Yeah, sure. Let me. Um, oh yeah, I could put you. I could put you in the share, and then I'll also post the link. Let's see. Do I have you? I might not have your email. Let me post the link. Anyone with the link can can view it. All right. Uh, and comment. And if if you end up wanting to be an editor, I can. If if you just send me your yeah, no worries. Of course. Email. I'll. Uh, uh, sorry, I just have to figure out how. There we go. My chat always disappears as soon as I become the the host Thank you. here or go full screen. Okay. Yep. So there's the there's the sheet. Uh, again, the idea, just real quick, is that we want to essentially document projects uh, within areas that have ongoing DIDCOM uh, stuff. We want to track the implementations that are out there that could be related or could be used. So like we've even added Varamo, which nobody's using in Aries that, that I know of, but right, it could be something interesting and useful. And certainly we would want to eventually know kind of interoperability uh, with those. So that this page, uh, the interoperability page should hopefully, you know, be refactored and kind of take into account the projects, the implementations. Uh, I added did methods just because without the corresponding did methods, uh, we can't do uh, like did peer together and things like that. Um, this is the Aries agent test harness um, tests that are somewhat related. Um, I'm still going through that stuff, although I've had to pause on it recently. Uh, and then obviously protocols that 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 could be supported. Crypto issues, uh, references has the JFF stuff in it right now. Any other links that we want to add that that might give us some good information? Uh, and then I'd forgotten about this questions one. Interop profiles. Do we need a lightweight alternative to Wacky Didcom? Ah, that was something that that um, we had wanted to consider. So anyways, yeah, we, feel free. We can add uh, more sheets or whatever, and then eventually come up with a nice interoperability tab. Yeah, that sounds very good. So I think during our last call, I also mentioned we would uh, come up with a, yeah, uh, a draft of any kind of an interoperability profile, the things that we will need to either include from the previous areas into our profiles or, um, yeah, upgrade, update from them, basically. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I did that. I didn't know. That, I mean, I knew that there was a spreadsheet, but I didn't know that uh, we wanted to put the profile here as well. So I put it on a different sheet. If you guys want to review it or like have a conversation about it, um, yeah, we can do so. And, so, and I'm I'm 100% open to. Uh, we could do it as a spreadsheet. We could do it as this document. Uh, doesn't matter yeah, really. I'm flexible if if people have preferences of how best to track this. Uh, I, I think I, your spreadsheet is pretty good so far, so I, I guess we can put them in in the spreadsheet. Okay, and then um, yeah, let's go through this together. You can kind of guide us through it, and yeah. Um, so if you can go to the very bottom of the okay. yeah, so this is where it starts basically. Can you scroll up a bit further, a bit more? A little bit more, and <laughs> that's a bit more. Yeah, okay. perfect. Gotcha. So th this is where it starts. So uh, basically, I'm I'm pretty sure you also came up with the Aries Into Profile page on. I think it's one of the features. I I, I left a link there. Yeah, it's a concept uh, 302 Aries Into Profile. So, well, I, I didn't put a lot of new things i just put uh, uh took the uh, one that we had from the aries interpol profile 2.0 uh 
and started commenting on them and like saying like are there going to be any necessities to change anything that are existing or are we going to need new protocols because this is exactly what happened with the upgrade from Aries into profile 1.0 to 2.0 uh, so they basically took the list from 1.0 extended with the 2.0 stuff and uh, took a look if they needed to change something if they wanted to drop it if they wanted to um yeah up to update it basically uh and yeah so if you go down a bit uh, lower you will see the same structure basically so tutorials sub targets na, na, na. yeah so this is where it starts so basically we have the uh, aip v1 and those were the set of rfcs that were meant to be a part of it so this this made the interoperable profile 1.0 okay a and then what happened is basically they made an upgrade to it. So they said, okay, these were the ones coming from a, a AIP to 1.0. And basically the same features have been taken and taken into consideration how to, um, what did they gonna be discontinued, upgraded or used as it were before basically. And that comes a bit uh, lower that list yeah so so this is this is exactly it so uh, yeah there are some notes that basically reformatted minimal updated updated etc so taking basically things that were a part of AIP 1.0 uh, came with a couple of upgrades basically and then added new stuff like see for example goal codes is new uh, did exchange is new uh, did compile and mime types are new Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. So I think it's yeah, more or less awesome. A visible step from what was AIP AIP 1.0. What is AIP 2.0? Then there are some other things like with the mediators and like uh, encryption envelopes that have been added as well. So I just took basically this list um, and started to go through it one by one to see whether we're going to use them update them or just drop them for aip 3.0 and that is the one that is visible in that uh, word document um, yeah google sheets basically uh yeah so the question is whether it's we're going to call it aip 3.0 or not but this is i think something that uh, is going to yeah we we can think about it. Um, it seems to have strong support from Stephen and Sam, so the currents uh, <laughs> that are unrelated. But uh, yeah, I mean, I you know this is one of those things. Like, at what point do we just say yes, we're doing AIP 3.0? Um, I I would vote that we just go ahead at this point and say AIP 3.0 is. Is happening. I mean, th this is fantastic uh, what you're doing, and then they seem to support that idea. It it seems to be kind of like, well, what do you want to do? But I think at this point that would be because of the legacy and and how, how much people know about it. Uh, and you know, we've kind of floated the idea past uh, our customers, and I I just think that the community community can really rally around. Uh, the, the concept of an of a new AIP that's didcom v2 related because anyone who's kind of thought like oh AIP 2.0 you know does that include didcom and they start digging or didcom v2 and they they start digging into it and then they're like eh, it's not really and yeah so I I feel like this would be like some solid ground for the community to just say yes that's the point AIP 3.0 didcom v2 so yeah. my, my question is if, if we support for example if we support AIP 3, uh, 3, should we support the 2.0? So if we are in 3, do we need to support the Bitcoin B1? That wasn't the case with uh, AIP 2.0 to 1.0, right? Uh, if if we see, it. yeah, uh, because of the interdependency uh, frameworks, uh, such as Go, for example, before the Indy SDK binding of Go, they did not support anything related to Indy. That's why, um, I don't think it's a necessity to support 1.0, but if there is a need of backwards compatibility, or if you're just moving on with, for example, uh, Akapai or 
uh, framework JavaScript, then yeah, in that case, it's just going to be an addition and yeah, not necessarily. Yeah, that's okay, such so, a good so question. In, 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 in that in that list, uh, did it come version one? Uh, version one is not is not there, right? Or it's, it is not in this one. That's why, for okay. example, if you look at to the uh, feature a zero zero nineteen encryption envelope, I just noted that it is not required for AIP three point zero because that is the old encryption envelope used for DITCOM v1. Okay, got it, got it, got it. Yeah. And I, I, I really like that concept. I'm so glad you brought that up, Roto, because that is the problem with legacy, right? If you always have to carry all of the legacy, you know, into the new AIP, then I don't think it'll ever get done, right? Because it just becomes such a burden. Uh, and, and people are already complaining that uh, Didcom V2 is it has quite a wide scope and it takes a lot in order to implement it. So um, I, yeah, my preference is, and I, I honestly, I, I was not familiar with this process. Hakan, I'm so glad that you kind of listed this out the way that you have. Uh, it's excellent, but yeah, my, my inclination is that if we can make AIP3 as light as possible, um, and then with people having the option to go support AIP you know, 2.0 if they want, that, that would be a major advantage for us. Yeah, because you, you can support any, any mm -hmm. because I think the accept yeah. message you, you put AIP1, AIP2, AIP3 is, is a list, right? Yeah, mm -hmm. good, good. Yeah. Got it. I have a quick question, guys. So I'm looking at like the different like uh, proposals and like the different RFCs in there, and I'm seeing that there are like technical RFCs as well as like application related RFCs as well as like sub protocol RFCs. Uh, so I'm trying to figure out like what's the purpose of like a profile in like in this case because like there's like JSON LD support like static peer dids, like presentation exchange or like if you support a specific like context like the attachment. So I'm trying to figure out, like how can we scope this. So yeah, because like I'm trying to figure out like exactly what are we trying to put like in a profile. Uh, does that make sense? Um, yeah, yeah, totally. I, I yeah, go I ahead. Also, Hakan. it makes sense. No, no, it's um. So I I think you ask a legitimate question because uh, the thing is we have Ditcom V2. And DITCOM v2 is basically for agents to communicate with each other. There is like an encryption envelope. So in the in the in the most basic, we need to be able to do a DIT exchange. We need to be able to uh, use the same uh, encryption envelope or like a key exchange with Diffie Hellman. Uh, use the same uh, yeah message structure, but for example, things like for example the uh, JSON LD attachments or or BBS plus or 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 anon crests or uh, whatever. So those yeah. I'm I'm also like this is something that we will have to talk about as well because they those are actually like payloads in the DITCOM v2 right. message and not necessarily related to DITCOM v2 as a as a uh, protocol. Right, right, right. And like you get to exchange that information in like the presentation exchange, like yeah. you can see like what what credentials you support and like all of that gets done like at a different level than like an interrupt profile, I would say. Yeah, but th this is exactly what we will have to think about because like, so this has actually been sold with Vaki, right? They mm -hmm. they, they just like, extended it uh, more than to DITCOM v2. They said, okay, we're going to use DITCOM v2 as the basic, but then on top of it, we're going to use BBS plus as uh, credentials. For instance, yes. and like use the diff presentation exchange protocol attachment type for uh, mm -hmm. present proof v3 that they also specified. So maybe the way forward is to call this Vaki profile. It's it's also possible, like uh, because just having just having the bare minimum is not going to cover because we will need to find out like whether we support the JSON LD, whether we support anon creds in these probably. Mm -hmm not or uh, it, it, it's really on the air basically so this is the part that we'll also uh, come up with as well i think got it got it yeah i guess like something i was curious about like right now we're using i see that we're using agents only for like issuing credential and like presenting credential like mm -hmm. so i was hoping that maybe like with the combi two protocols we can have like more application related protocols like at the same like issue present proof credential and like we can have like yeah like group chat or like chat messages and like stuff like that i'm like interesting how we can communicate about like exchanging those like protocols as well i think it would be something 
useful to do in the IP3. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. That's that's also a legit uh, part. We we do have the basic messaging. I think if you scroll down a bit further. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but I mean, yeah, you probably saw it anyway. So we will need to uh, probably update it according to the. Um... Mm -hmm. Yeah, and then like I think routing is also almost baked in in DeepCom v2. Yes. As well. Uh, so maybe we can get rid of those. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for all the work. Like I still need to look. Yeah, no worries. This. Of I course. Mean, I mean. It, it it also needs a lot of discussions, like what we want to include and what we don't want to include. For example, I did realize that I made a mistake with like including indie attachments because do we really want the indie dependency coming into uh, AIP 3.0 or not? I don't know. We we need to be careful maybe about uh, making that statement. If we can avoid it, well, I would love to. <laughs> yeah, I mean minimal. Yeah, because. The way that you can, I think that we used to use the, the profile as incremental, like right? P1, P2, and the, the, the latest is, is the best. But I think we can compose, like having a minimum or did it come B2, like, like this one, basic stuff. And then if you want to support India or other, it can be another profile, right? And you can compose with several profiles, probably. That's just. That that could be a possibility to yeah to uh, extend it. Yeah. This is you such you, an interesting... you you add yeah okay go ahead. Yeah. No, I, I was just gonna say that this is such an interesting <clears throat> moment because yeah these AIPs have been these kind of like I mean the goal right is that these agents can just interop but. Um, the variety of ways to interop is becoming so great that it's hard to imagine, yeah, AIP3, right, being all encompassing, uh, especially now that the Aries world is untying itself from uh, Indy. Yeah. And yeah, so exactly what Hakan's saying, Roto saying, Alex is, is saying, like, what is it that composes this thing? Because that's such a hard question to answer, I like what Hawkins saying about maybe calling it AIP wacky. But then I, I would just love to talk a little bit about that in terms of uh, thoughts of then what is the AIP providing that the kind of wacky specification isn't providing? And does that kind of give us a hint at uh, our scope? Thoughts? So uh, my, my thought is Vaki is a work that has been done in a collaboration between Diff and Hyperledger. Uh, and the result was basically uh, Vaki as a specification. However, we need uh, clear concepts and features that needs to be implemented by the ARIES frameworks to be compatible with Vaki as a uh, profile. And I think our goal in, in, in here is uh, if we choose to go Vaki, I mean, this is also still like an, on, on the air, but if, if we do so, and I, I think it looks very similar, uh, but then we have to align with the credential type, which is BBS plus because it's a part of Vaki. But if you say yes, okay, this is the way forward. Uh, in that case, I think this working group can be uh, a part of uh, defining the uh, features and concepts uh, RFCs that are required to fulfill Vaki as a spec. So how can it, is Vaki only tied to BBS Plus? Or I think it's yes. support. Yeah, only to that? It, it, it is a part, like in Vaki, um, I'm, I'm going to check this again, but wallet interaction. Because I, I remember in the, in the, pro, in the <clears throat> attachment, uh, as as know, three you version can. like Indy. Well, you can do Indy as well. Okay. I thought it was uh, bound to the uh, BBS plus. I thought this, this is what they aligned on when choosing. I think you can use the different like credential types, like. Yeah, VC, I think like, okay. Indy, uh, yeah, JSON-LD and the other one was... JWT, uh, too. JWT. 
Okay, in that like case, you have, you have LD, mm -hmm. VPs, LD, JWTs, yeah. Yeah. But then again, yeah, think... it, it's very important uh, distinction because like Indy has one implementation. Uh, if you take yeah. Indy, you have to take the uh, libraries that come with it. Um, yeah. Yeah, I was gonna say that in my opinion, like the Waki profile, like it's an extremely like complex, uh, like AIP, like and there's a lot of things to implement at that level, uh, like like having tried to do that and uh, having to support like all the different like message types, all the different like contexts, all the different credentials, it's like a piece of work in and of itself, uh, and uh, like they define like a lot of things on how to exchange credentials like in that specification. Yeah. So I guess. Uh, what I'm trying to figure out, like with an AIP, like do we want to have similar protocols like that, that you can exchange like other type of information, like messages, group messages, or do we just want it to be focused on like credential exchange and like everything that's related with with all of that, uh, or do we leave that at the walkie level? Because like, yeah, like I think like even like at the DIPCOM interoperability with Brian and uh, Diwala and Snore, like we tried to like even uh, do like a subset of all of the features that were in there just because like there were so many. Uh, and we weren't like really using Waki, like we were using like a, a minimal viable like Waki uh, just because like everything uh, was so cumbersome to implement from scratch. Okay. And I, I tried to bring that point up with Sam, and I don't think I did a good job with it. Um, that is there some kind of simpler form? I mean, I guess that was our question, our spreadsheet. Is there some simpler form of wacky? Like, I don't, I wasn't there when they were defining wacky, right? So I don't know the discussions that they had in terms of okay, we're going to define this spec and yes, it's going to have lots of steps to it and be complicated, but this is kind of this full implementation that covers as much as we can imagine um, that is needed. But yeah, is there this shortcut that can be developed that's more like, hey, you know, you want to get started in this, this didcom world and you want to, you want to pass credentials you don't need all of, of wacky. And um, yeah, I can't even say what his answer was. <laughs> uh, you know, I mean, it sounds like, um, yeah, I, 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 like I said, I don't think I asked the question well enough to, to get a, a straight answer for that. Uh, I don't know, any, uh, yeah, thoughts on what Alex is saying in terms of, um, the complexity of wacky i i, I well, think when, when when okay please go ahead now when, when when someone say i'm supporting wacky do you need to support all the spec or just because if you're supporting maybe indie why do you, you should care about the the json ld bbs plus is how yeah. you define that in when you say I'm supporting work, I, I don't know that how it works or should work. Yeah, I think Waki just like specify the messages like within the Waki messages, like you define the credential types and everything like within yeah. the messages. So as long as like you support like exchanging those messages, right? You support the Waki spec like in my mind. But then, like, do you implement, like, do you have, like, an LD processor, like, for processing LD credentials? Like, do you have, that's, like, the back-end question, though. Uh, yeah. Okay, but, but if you support this propose of a uh, request issue flow, are, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Because that, that's maybe simpler, right? The, I think the, yeah. the, the, the complex part is the, when, when you read the, the credential, the presentation, all the, all the stuff. Oh. Yeah, the thing is like if you like do you have like do you have to support like uh, the requesting of credential like in the like in the issuing of credential uh all of that kind of stuff so yeah uh, and then in some ways does this dovetail with the discovery uh protocol 
because I mean, th at least that's the way that uh, at a high level they talk about Didcom V2 is like, oh, you know, well, at the very least, you know, you have this messaging layer that you can at least approach another agent and say, you know, hi, right? Like you try to get started uh, with each other and then you can discover what that that agent or mediator supports in order to figure out, you know, at what l level you can do business, right? So, but like, do you, is, is, is the these features of Wacky, would that fit within that discovery protocol? Or is that a different l l level or layer? Because, uh, you know, a lot of times we've talked about the discovery protocol just in terms of like, what application protocols do you support? But like, can you dive deep enough to say, I do Wacky, but I don't do BBS plus? Same by now, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's not specified, so you you, you can do yeah. whatever you want, but both parties should know what they are telling. Yeah, yeah. it's not the, the the protocol is flexible enough to 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 do whatever you want to also extend that to to other things, but uh, I think we we need this this. Um, RFC to be included and really tell what, what it means for that. Anyway. Because, because I, um, cause I, I guess my sense that is, uh, you know, I think we're saying like really important things here. My sense is that this scope is, is, is widening or, or is wide enough. And even at the, just the wacky uh, uh, level that yeah, there needs to be this negotiation that basically says, like, there's a lot that we could all be supporting. This is what I support. And and um, at least being able to transfer that amount of information so that two agents could know what they can do. Yeah, but I, I think that's the part of the uh, profiles that are defined also in the DITCOM spec, right? We do have these three profiles right now, the DITCOM V1 or four in total, uh, DITCOM, uh, AIP1, AIP2 with encryption envelope old, AIP2 with encryption envelope new and DITCOM V2 basically. So I guess there would be a chance to actually increase the amount of profiles that, that are supported. Like I don't see why mm -hmm. that would be a problem. Like we could I say, guess, for example, I, yeah, yes, sorry. I, I guess I'm worried that we are discovering that having a profile that's like, okay, this is the set of things that I support and I'm going to give it a label, right? Mm -hmm. uh, it's sounding to me like that may not scale, like the, the, that's not possible anymore, that there's so many different elements that it's more like, how do I present to you everything that I can do and you can present to me everything you can do and then we can decide uh, how we are going to interrupt, right? Like, uh, you know, if you only speak Indy and I, Indy credentials, let's say, and I don't do that, uh, then we know we can't get started. But um, maybe we find out, uh, you know, I support ND and BBS plus and you support JSON LD and BBS plus and now we can, we can, we can go ahead and, and negotiate to use BBS plus or something like that. Like, uh, if I'm talking crazy, you know, but the, I'm starting to get this sense that it's, um, th that, yeah, just this labeling of a, of an AIP might be difficult uh so then the, that the new aip should be something more of like how do we discover how to interrupt with each other but uh, yeah i might be getting too meta just just thoughts yeah i i, I think <laughs> it's it's very very like quite quite meta <laughs> yeah and which well, which i kind of hate by the way but uh you know i i the bottom line is i don't see a clear path yet uh because you guys are bringing up such good nuanced questions. I mean, I think that JFF activity was so important to kind of expose uh, the variety that, that can occur. And, and so they chose this shortest path, right? And I guess in my opinion, 
uh, I see kind of like what you're saying is like you're trying to figure out like what signatures you support, right? Like, hey, do we support the same signature types, the same uh, like uh, low level cryptography? Uh, but in my experience, the low level cryptography like depends on a like use case basis, like at the application level. And uh, I don't think like you can exchange cryptography at uh, maybe like at an agent basis. Maybe you can, because the agent. Well, but the, the question is like, now does the agent have to support like all the lower level cryptography, or like can that be delegated to other parties, right? Because I guess what I'm trying to say is that some uh, some issuer, like in the issue credential flow, they might support JWT, uh, but they might not. So, like Waki defined that defined that uh, format exchange like whatever like signatures you support like within the messages within Waki. So I think it's uh, I'm not sure that we can exchange keys at the at the agent level like key format because you would exchange it at like a application like use case level. Like another agent doesn't care what your agent does with key management. That's the way I think about it. Like whatever like your agent does with key management, what keys it support, it's like an internal thing. And then you want to expose that at the application level. Hey, for this use case, this credential was signed with this key. Uh, does that make sense? Uh, I'm not sure like I'm, I'm wording it properly. To some degree, it, it makes sense to me. Having not um, implemented at the level that you have I, I just basically take your word for it. <laughs> um, cool. But so, so, well, I guess what, yeah, I'm still going back to, based on what you're saying, I'm still going back to this concept of a discovery protocol. And if that's yeah. discovering application level protocols that you support, are you saying that there could be richer information, more detail about that application protocol and some of the nuance of things that you would have to support within it. Right, exactly. It's like, do you have to like, like some sub protocol like support like within like walk? It's like, hey, I don't do uh, like the like the request proof. Or like, I don't uh, I don't request for credential to issue a credential or like right. something like that <clears throat> for some whatever reason, right? Or hey, in this group chat, like I don't support having like an admin in my group chat protocol. But yeah, then like it becomes like, how do you define protocols? Uh, so yeah, it's. <laughs> right. Oh, maybe one way to, to define this, uh, how to work with this discover discover features protocol, because I think this is generic and but for, for, for this AIP three, we can define, okay, in discovery, you need to support at least this support with roles you, you you can handle with protocols, uh, some specific protocols on the way you should specify if there are nuances within each protocol, like, like the Waki SK. I, I support Waki or issue credential three in this format, something like that. And, and we specify how should we state on the, on the discovery protocol. That can be one way. <laughs> yeah. I guess something that I saw like in the Akapai meeting, they had like handshake protocols in the message for like showing uh, uh, what's it called? Working with uh, the open, uh, the open, uh, not open API. Open connect, which one? Yeah, the uh, open ID connect. Yeah, like I saw that uh, they had some like handshake protocols like in there. Uh, I wasn't sure like what was their thought behind that. Yeah, something similar. Okay. But now you don't want to have like a new field, right? Okay. So, so on the on the table, how can you you add the? Um, okay, this is the V two protocol. I see that this is exchange. Do we need that in this one? Did exchange? Yeah. I think so. I think so. <laughs> I I, th I think so because I think it's it it came from um. AIP 2.0 for DITCOM v2 conformity. 
So uh, we're ch exchanging, we're moving from connections protocol to did exchange protocol. And uh, if it's a public did, it can be resolved via the did exchange. And if we are going for a um, uh, going for a peer did, for example, uh, in that case, um, it can be done with using an out of band protocol, which which also uh, is a part of. Well, it's seen as a part of did exchange. But oh, yeah, okay. for, for, so, my, for, for my understanding, did exchange is how Ares deals with, uh, I think, threats from from uh, Didcom v2 specification. Okay, I need to check that. Yeah, it, that's part of Ares, did exchange. Yeah. So those are a bit old comments. Um, I, I will need to go through this document again to. Yeah, I'm gonna recheck what, what is in there in the DDT exchange because I normally use it DDT exchange with DDT, DDT key, sorry. So it's based to, to solve the DDT key URL. As well. Yeah. 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 So, so if you're gonna use DDT key, you need DDT exchange. But you, if you use DDT peer, you basically don't need it, it's just a replay back to there to the URL that is in the, the service endpoint. I'm not sure if I understood you, sorry. Uh, because I think if you, if you are using DDT peer, you, you, you can create a, an out of band. Yes. And just the, the other party can resolve the DDT peer that's inside the out of band and replay back to you because in the DDP are you're going to have the service endpoint and you're going to have the URL how to communicate back. So you, yes. you don't need the protocol to understand the, 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 DDT, the DIDs from the two parties, right? The one who receives the out of band know the, which, which is the DDP from the creator of the out of band. And when you replay back, you actually, you send your DID. So yes, both so parties can create a connection. Exactly, but you still need the exchange because all of this stuff is based on protocols, like um, basically defining how an agent should behave when something comes to them. And I, I think that's why uh, whether it is like a peer did or a key did key or a public did, you still need the did exchange protocol to go through, uh, first of all, what's it again? Uh, the first one is exchange requests that can be with the out of band if it's, for example, uh, should be broadcasted. The second thing is exchange response, how the uh, counterparty is responding to it. And then there is the exchange complete as the last step. And uh, all agents need to go through this to get, create like internally in a Aries uh, clients a uh, connection ID and the connection situation that now established or completed. Okay. Okay. The... Well, yeah, that, that's that's because uh, yeah, in the eighties, uh, probably they on the frameworks they implement that way, so it's it's yeah. fine. We, uh, but maybe we we need to to refine a little bit based on what did it come to can provide if you are using like yeah. uh, the peer. Yeah, and you you are not using Aries, are you? Or I no, we we build like a framework without uh, without Agapi and okay. without uh, and we test it against Agapi. So we we are playing with both, right? So and and that way when we because we started we did it combi two playing did it combi two. So in, yes. in that case we didn't need the the exchange protocol because it's just one message. So it's easy in a way doing a DD uh, exchange, but it's just so plain we didn't come with you that we, we don't need a protocol, right? But if you, yeah, but, but you are right, because if you are using Akapai, you need this concept of, of connection and somehow to write it and, and establish that connection when you receive the messages. So uh, yeah. it's fine. So. Sure. 
I guess how do we want to handle the concept of connections in Ditcom V2, right? Because then I feel like this is like a, one of the big, like, biggest like breaking changes between V1 and V2 is this concept of like there's no connection concept and like this like whole key agreement is happening like on each message right now. Uh, and in my opinion, I think in Ditcom V3 is going to change again because you can scale encryption on each message if you want to do like group things with lots of people. Uh, so, yeah, like, do we want to tackle it or maybe just keep having this concept of connections and try to have the combi to use the connections concept somehow, like using their like key rotation processes and maybe we can make a protocol that way. So from what I understood, at least the time that I was um, Sam Curran and Steven Curran was in the call is that we want to keep connection ID as a uh, as an abstract construct, as a construct to uh, keep these informations related to a connection. Um, yeah, I, I don't think so far the plan wasn't to make it disappear basically, but to work with it. Yeah, like I think like a person like makes sense, like it makes like development a lot easier to have this like abstraction layers of like a connection concept to like keep track of like messages and like like having like a thread uh, and whatnot. So yeah, like I'm all for it. Like uh, like I myself haven't like figured out a way to resolve messages like if did changes and like did rotation. Like I haven't had to deal with all of that. So yeah, yeah. But uh, speaking of this multi messaging, I think this is one of the parts that you are interested in. If I understood you correctly, because you mentioned a couple of times, um, uh, we might need to extend the basic message protocol and like, uh, or, or or create something like a multi messaging uh, concept or as a feature as an RFC, if you want to uh, have it in the Ditcom V2 profile, basically. Yeah. I mean, like, I'm not, yeah, like, I'm personally interested in, like, having, like, creating, like, a group chat mm -hmm. app out of Bitcoin V2. Like, I think that's just, like, the, like, the, cool, like, the, like, an easy thing, like, a low-level lift in terms of, like, application that can be developed. Because right now, I feel like a lot of interactions are, like, one-to-one. -one. So, like, I'm yeah. interested in, to, like, a one-to-many interaction just to see, like, what complexity it brings. Mainly in group, like, a group chat is the easiest implementation of that. But did, I see did come as just being like a peer-to-peer -peer protocol, like in it of its nature, which is, yeah, like it's not peer one to many, right? Uh, yeah. But can be extended, as you said. So. Yeah. yeah, 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 definitely, definitely. Like I'm interested in like trying to do that work as well. Yeah. I'm so, just trying to fill in our meeting page real quick. Uh, I created it and posted a link for anybody who wants to uh, put themselves on it. Although I think we already have mm, Hacken, Rodolfo, Alex. So I think we have everybody who's on Confluence on there. And I'm just adding some of our notes. Uh, <clears throat> You did. You don't have Hyperledger access, right? So the Hyperledger Foundation. And no. Okay. Okay. So, um, do we just want to maybe we let's do a quick update on on just uh, people's didcom v2 uh, activities as well it's always nice to keep up with each other uh and we haven't heard uh yeah from each person just what they're up to so um yeah for me what am i up to other than yeah this stuff uh specifically yeah i don't have any uh active didcom v2 activities going how about you Anybody? I think this one is the, the main one. <laughs> yeah, fair Inter enough. Up. Inter up, yeah. So, 
for ACOPA, there is an open pull request for um, issue credential and present proof protocols uh, for DITCOM version two. And now there's like the question how to handle connections. And then you get to get the information from connections, um, which message format is used, and then to adopt the, like, um, the encryption, but also then maybe to re when you have the information about which DITCOM version is used, you can actually reuse some of DITCOM uh, of the like, AIP one and two also, but yeah, the connection is the big issue also to continue. How's the level of support for that activity uh, it, for you, Judith? Is is it basically that 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 Haken and then whatever meetings you guys attend in terms of like Akapai or or whatever? Is that is that where you're getting the most support, or or is there? Uh, or like the currents uh, supporting you or anybody else, Hard Daniel Hardman, or I guess the the diff user group. Uh, I'm just interested uh, in terms of, you know, like, are, are we it <laughs> or is, is there more? Um, I mean, I got a feedback today to for the pull request, but also like, yeah, then there's this meeting <laughs> and this is the yeah. come. To meeting and yeah, like there's the other meeting for Akapai, which I cannot attend on Tuesdays because yeah. I, um, I'm not free on those days. But yeah, so Hakan attends that, and then yeah, and they have meetings with Hakan. <laughs> so yeah, fair. In in terms of support, I think we have a lot of, I mean, ideas and like uh, for example, there was some uh, Tibor Glastra made also a couple of comments on Judith's uh, pull request. Oh, good. So we we are getting feedback. But like in terms of muscle, it's very limited and it's basically due to so far for the Diptom V2 in uh, Aries implementation, Akapa uh, 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 implementation. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so in terms of like uh, talking about connections, what is... What are some ideas for how we can accelerate that conversation? Um... Well, in my opinion, like one important step would be maybe to make uh, out of band working for the message structure of DITCOM v2 as well. And then there would be a way to establish, like Hakan already said, like there would be a, a way to establish a DITCOM v2 connection by having an out of band protocol working for DITCOM v2's message structure. And then, yeah, from there, you would have the information, okay, we're using DITCOM v2, and then you can basically use the protocols from uh, DITCOM v2 as well. That would be one approach, for example. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, and due to the limited side that we have, because it's like a master's thesis as well, like we will need to come up with some uh, results like by end of February, middle of March or something like that. So uh that's why i personally would like to go for a more pragmatic approach of defining a profile saying that this is what is supported and um yeah tackle how we can just make it happen basically with it can be to encryption envelope plus message structure for basic messaging issuing credentials and presenting proofs and of course establishment of aries connections okay Yeah, it's, uh, I guess uh, you know, one thing that, well, wh whenever we get to kind of this place where, you know, we have some meta discussions and then, you know, we also, we also have these actual implementations going on, I think that's really good uh, and it helps to constrain us. Um, we do have uh, a customer, you know, you know not only uh, Roots ID itself doing DIDCOM V2, but we have... Um, Customers who are in interested and customers who are actually implementing uh, DIDCOM v2 uh, as well. So hopefully we can use the intersection of of these implementations to define to 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 you know come to come to terms with you know being grounded, not being so meta. Uh, you know that's partly why I, I kind of started building the spreadsheet. Uh, I wish that I was more, you know, a lot of times when I do these kinds of things, like I have a very clear vision that I really want to drive on. And in this case, uh, there's just more information to to gather. Um, 
So what am I trying to say? I'm trying to say that I want to capture the actual details of these implementations uh, in the spreadsheet so that we can properly discuss individual pieces. Um, and, and so I'm, I'm open to ideas and energy and, and thoughts. You know, I want to, to help capture these things, but it's hard, right? Because I'm not doing the implementation. Other people are doing the implementation and there's multiple of them ongoing. So um, I just want everyone to know that I'm trying to grapple with like, how do we uh, use this this so valuable information of of these implementations going on? And, and I think it's honestly the Akapai work is unique uh at least from my point of view because like like roto said you know we just started with didcom v2 so we we kind of don't have that didcom v1 constraint baggage. yeah the the back issue or the legacy of it as much uh weighing on us and and our customer doesn't either uh and but that's why the occupy stuff so valuable because there are going there are, you know these important implementations are do do have this legacy. So, um, yeah, I said a lot of words. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think like even like bringing the Veramo guys that are like outside the Hyperledger ecosystem, mm -hmm. they might have like a different total views on how to handle this and like how we can like interrupt with them as well. And like they might have like an interesting thoughts to to say like how we can leverage different like profiles and from that perspective. So, yeah. So maybe I I will take that as uh, a a task, or or if if Alex you feel like you want to reach out to them and try to figure out how we can get them either in this meeting or I at least capture their work. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. I think like yeah, maybe Nick can get here because like he's like on the east coast. He's like he's in New York. So yeah, I'll let him know about this meeting. Oh, although he has been uh, attending the diff ones. Yeah, he comes to lately. The, the diff yeah. And 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 by the way, this meeting having this before the diff meeting, I think, is helping uh, in terms of right capturing that audience uh, as well. So yeah, maybe you can bring it up then. All right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'll, I'll reach out. To you. Okay, we have two minutes left. So, so um, a little yeah, update ahead. from my side. Um, I will, or we will talk in the next Akapai implementation group, Akapag, about which encryption envelope to go for, or like see whether, yeah, because there's so many different ones, including like a, a native implementation of it on Akapai. The question comes to which one do we want to use? And I think that would be also play a role in yeah what Alex was mentioning about like how to deal with uh, key exchange and all those things are on that um, en uh, encryption envelope level basically of this common implementation. So yeah, I will update you next time. But I, I think we'll see each other next Monday anyway before that call. That call happens on Tuesdays. Yeah, fair. Yeah. Any other thoughts? I, I think I I do I, I I this is the first time that I'm thinking towards like a more detailed form of discovery. It just seems to me to be so valuable if there really is a way to for agents to tell each other these are all the things that I support. Uh, you know, with much more detail than maybe what we've kind of thought of uh, in the discovery. Uh, protocol in the past. So, I mean, that's for me a big takeaway from this. Like, is there a more detailed way for agents to, you know, talk about their encryption envelope and things like that? <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Any other thoughts? I think it's really good. Okay. All right. We did it. Sorry that I was late. Uh, uh, I'll do better next time. These uh, contractor cabinet folks are killing me. <laughs> that's my that's my personal problem. <laughs> Thank you all. It's always great to see you. I really appreciate Thanks, this guys. meeting. Yeah, see you all. Bye, y'all. Bye, bye. Thank you. Bye. -bye. Thank you. Thank you.